severe but serious side effects may occur. And now a world news investigation. Johnson & Johnson is one of America's most respected brands. Tylenol, Motrin. So why did people secretly pull one of its products off the shelves? Here with our investigation, Dr. Richard Besser. Rich. Yeah, Diane, for generations, parents have depended on Johnson & Johnson, but they've gone through eight recalls in the past year, the largest ever over-the-counter children's recall in history. And usually when there's a faulty product, it's recalled, even if it doesn't pose harm to the consumer. But that's not what happened in this case. It was November of 2008 when Johnson & Johnson and its subsidiary, McNeil Consumer Healthcare, discovered a problem. Some of its Motrin tablets were not dissolving properly, meaning if you had a headache and took one of these affected tablets, it may not work as expected. But instead of issuing a recall, something else happened. At 5,000 convenience stores around the country, contractors were sent out on a secret mission to quietly buy up the faulty Motrin without alerting the public. I wish to this day that I hadn't done it, but I did, and I'm stuck with it. ABC News found Lynn Walther, one of the contractors hired by an inventory company. They gave him written instructions detailing this assignment. You should simply act like a regular customer while making these purchases, it said. There must be no mention of this being a recall of the product. Run in, find the product, make your purchase, and run out. Usually the only thing that was said was, that's quite a bit of Motrin, what are you going to do with that? And I just said, I'd like to purchase this Motrin. Walther's concerns eventually made it to Congress. Initially at the hearing, a Johnson & Johnson executive said they weren't behind this, that they were simply doing an audit to find out where these faulty pills had ended up. I don't believe there was any intent to mislead or hide anything. But emails obtained by ABC News reveal that senior executives at Johnson & Johnson's subsidiary McNeil coordinated the $400,000 secret Motrin purchase program from the very beginning. They wrote, do not communicate to store personnel any information about this product. Simply visit each store, locate the product, and if any is found, purchase all of the product. An email shows this program was authorized by McNeil's president, in which he says, let's make this happen ASAP. And what about the FDA, the industry watchdog? The FDA claims it had no knowledge of plans to launch a phantom recall. But emails from Johnson & Johnson McNeil obtained by ABC News raise questions as to what FDA knew. One email goes as far as saying that the FDA was really bending the rules by not automatically urging a recall. Both FDA and Johnson & Johnson declined our request for interviews. In a written statement, FDA said, when FDA learned that McNeil had hired contractors to secretly purchase product off the shelves, the agency advised McNeil to do a full recall, which the company agreed to initiate in July 2009. Johnson & Johnson McNeil issued a statement saying, McNeil kept the FDA informed of its actions and removed the product from the market in a compliant manner. However, given the concerns highlighted by the Congressional Committee with respect to Motrin, moving forward we would look to handle things differently. Johnson Johnson is not off the hook, but neither is the FDA for being too cozy with industry and not forthcoming with Congress. Johnson & Johnson is facing a criminal investigation into all these recalls and the silent market withdrawal of those Motrin tablets. And the company's vice president, who testified at the hearings, has, has resigned. And is this the only time this has ever happened? Do we know? Well, Congress is looking into some documents that have surfaced that suggest the company considered another secret recall of a children's product. At least considered it. Okay, we'll let you know what happens.